I mean, pollination's key. That yeah. If it doesn't get pollinated, there's no fruit. So we have to guarantee pollination by bringing in as many pollinators as we can. So you've probably heard a lot about pollinators and having pollinator gardens and the reason for that is because bumblebees and honeybees oh my gosh the mosquitoes the bumblebees and the honeybees are really really important for agriculture they're important for pollinating crops and because for people that rely solely on wind pollination oftentimes that isn't enough and results in some lower than uh, average crops so anyway Sam's out here today <laughs> there he is and it's raining if you guys can't tell let's ouch let's try to turn this baby around okay it's raining and the mosquitoes are horrible oh okay yeah, they're they're flying in my face right now so what we got going here today Sam was just down here on the marsh these are the bumblebee huts today the bumblebees are coming. They come from Michigan and they get trucked over here. And um, yeah, so he is just, what are you doing? So I'm just cutting down all the long grass that grew up here over the summer uh, because then once we pick up the uh, bees, we have it's trimmed down so we can just put the hives in here and we don't have to fight all the long grass around here. So we are heading over to pick up the bumblebees here today. And so how many? How many are we getting? Uh, we're getting 32 hives, which constitutes eight boxes. Each box has, it's called a quad, it has four hives in it. And uh, these are bumblebees, not honeybees. And we actually purchased these. Uh, I ordered them back in March, and they come from Michigan. And we pick them up and place them. I like to put them by my early varieties that are normally blooming already right now nothing's blooming. it's so, actually been a little bit stressful very stressful because you want things to get moving and the weather hasn't been cooperating it's been cold it's been rainy and there's a lot of flowers ready to open but they haven't opened yet so the bees are gonna have to eat on wildflowers and if they find a good source of wildflowers they don't want to go to the cranberries so hopefully I can convince them to go to the cranberries when they open I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that <laughs> so last year we planted three apple trees and part of that was to keep pollinators right. present yes. right so yes. those are kind of located just off the marsh just like just a few like, hundred yards. Yeah, a couple hundred yards. And those are to keep the pollinators close. Pollinators meaning honeybees and bumblebees. It basically um, gives a food source for the wild bees uh, before the cranberries start blooming. But the, the apple trees are done right now. Right. The apple trees are done. The cherries are done. You hope and pray that things, things do what they're supposed to do so that... Uh, you actually have a crop to sell in the fall. Just keep smiling. <laughs> Even when you don't want to, just keep smiling. Okay, listen really carefully here. off because we moved them around. So the kind of neat thing about these bumblebees is that they're actually growing in a laboratory specifically for farmers to buy so that they can pollinate their crops. And it says up here it's actually for fruit and vegetable crops. So interesting. It's pretty cool how easy it is to put these out too. Which side are you going to do first here? Well, we're going to put two quads in this little hut. Okay. I just like to cut these little doors off because yep. sometimes the wind will blow them in and they'll get caught in the way. 
as long as they're under the roof, they're fine. This is the door, right? Yeah, see this is the door, and you lift this up, and this hole is where the bees can go back into the hive. This is where they have to come out, and that little brown paper is there so that they don't sting you when you open up the door. So they actually have to chew through that paper to get out. And when I open this, you'll see a bunch of bees starting to uh, <laughs> chew on that. So okay. you have, oh, you have about uh, 15 minutes to actually get away. Away. Which is plenty of time. Oh yeah. So then I tie them down. To prevent storms from blowing them away. And then also, sometimes a bear. It's happened. It's happened. Um, not so much now that we have the new fence. You can hear them inside Oh my there. gosh. <laughs> They're, They're just a little upset. They're just a buzzing. There, now the rope is tight enough where if a storm comes, it's not gonna blow them away. Now when I open this, hopefully we'll see So this is their in hole, yeah. correct? This is where they are going to fly back in. Yeah. And see, oh yeah, and you can one see right them. There. They're he's all already, wiggling. He's in here too. They're like, I want out of here. And if I get my way, I'm going to sting you. <laughs> can you guys see that? I wonder if I can get some better lighting. Oh, this one's in here too. Just trying to get out. This one isn't quite as active right Sometimes, here. Sometimes, now see this one's active here, this one's active here, that one's active. This one is super, oh my gosh, there's two of them trying to get out. Yeah, and uh, you know, sometimes it'll take, just within the first two hours of putting them out, they'll chew through and start foraging. So this here is what we call oh, hooks. A couple flowers out here. You actually see flowers, oh yep, I see one over there. So this is what we call hooks, and each of those hooks has a, a, not quite a blossom yet, but it has a little bud on the end, and that is going to open, which will be the flower, and that's what the bees are going to pollinate. So we're just waiting for those to open. So shortly this should be a sea of kind of a light pink, and the bumblebees should be out here buzzing from one to the next, just pollinating away. It's amazing how they actually have kind of a smell. It smells like my microbiology lab in college. <laughs> Both those, see there? Yeah, that one's we got multiple. pop out. Yeah, there's a couple of them there. They want out. They want out. So, yeah, very, very cool. Our hybrids come into bloom much sooner than everything else. So, the bumblebees are here to work on that bloom right away before the honeybees come. The honeybees, we get a hundred hives of honeybees. They do the mass pollinating, but the bumblebees will pollinate in just about any kind of weather. So it's kind of a way to reduce risk. You have some bumblebees so that even if the weather is cruddy, you're still getting some pollination done. And then also, these we purchase, the honeybees we just rent. And when the rental time is up with the honeybees, a lot of times you still have some residual bloom. So you still have the bumblebees here to try to pollinate that bloom at the end of the season so i mean pollination's key that yeah if it doesn't get pollinated there's no fruit so we have to guarantee pollination by bringing in as many pollinators as we can the first two i oriented north and south now these two i orient east and west you know if you have the sun hitting the front of the hive it'll heat it up faster get them active sooner so i change it up depending on time of day just trying to average everything out. We get the best pollination we can. One quad is $280. So we got a couple thousand bucks in bumblebees. But pollination's expensive. We got $7,000 in honeybees. So I budget nine, about $9,000 a year just for pollination. All right, so just a couple more places to set these bumblebees, and then, and then I guess that's it. Then they have to do their job. Yeah. <laughs> you've yeah. you've done your job, and now they got to do their job. These are the easiest thing to set out, though. I mean, you don't have to worry about a bee suit. And then 
bumblebees aren't as aggressive as the honeybees. You can actually walk around the hive in the summertime and not get stung. Now if you go down and tap on the box, yeah, they're going to come after you. But you can walk around. I like them myself, but uh, I don't think with a short pollinating window, I think it's a mistake to go just bumblebees. I think you still need the honeybees just because there's such a massive amount of pollination that happens in a short window. There's four of them. They want out. They do. All right, so all the hives have been placed, and like we said before, Warren did his job, so now they got to do their job. Yep. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching and hanging out with us here for this day on the Cranberry Marsh, and hope you guys enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up, Warren. <laughs> all right, thanks. Bye. Catch you guys next time.